in the book of Matthew, and I'll just read one verse to begin. Speaking of the, the birth of Christ and the angel revealing news to Joseph. It says, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Now, when you think about it, this is really the heart and the center of the Christmas story, that God would come and be with us. It's really the heart and the center of the Christian faith, Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. See, as a representative, an ambassador, if you will, a follower of Jesus Christ, I think you might agree with me that we live in a time of rapid cultural change. We live in a time of amazing spiritual confusion. A lot of people, your friends, people around you, people that live in your neighborhood, see Christianity as, well, maybe one of the options out there. In fact, some people take Christianity and they mix it together with all kinds of different things. Not necessarily an authentic Bible Jesus, but they'll take the faith and they mix it together with a little bit of Eastern mysticism, maybe throw in some meditation, some mantras, some chanting, uh, or, or take it back into what I think sometimes is an unhealthy Judaistic type lifestyle that takes it back into Judaism. Some people mix it together with New Age and yoga. Some say, hey, let's mix it together with a little marijuana. Why not? It's legal. Mind expansion. And there is kind of this thing where Christianity is being absorbed into all kinds of different lifestyles and expressions. A lot of people outside the church think that Christians are people who are selfish. Believe it or not, there's people who look at Christianity and say, well, you know, they're kind of cop-outs. They believe in this God who's supposed to bless them and give them a fuller life and give them this hope of heaven. And, and so they, they, they wait for this thing called the rapture. They don't really care about the earth or the planet or what's happening here. They're in their own weird little world. So I want you to listen. This, this, this necessity for a, a maybe balanced view of who God is and Jesus is, he says here he's Emmanuel, God with us. See, here's the thing about Christianity. First, it's a glorious thing. It's an amazing thing. But at the same time, if you think about it, if you look at it, it's also a very offensive thing. It says it right here, God with us. I mean, to call a child born into this world God with us, would you name your child that? Hey, look, I got a brand new little baby. What'd you name him? Oh, he's God with us. Oh, really? Wait a couple of days. <laughs> you might call him something else. <laughs> but this was true. This was God with us. And to people in that time and in that culture, well, that would have been offensive to many of them. They had their gods. Rome had a pantheon of gods. Greeks sure did, and the culture was filled with them. So it's offensive. But here's the thing with Christianity. You can't separate the glory of Christianity, the amazing good news, from the fact that it's also very offensive. Christianity is and always will be about a cross and a crown. You can't separate the two. They come together. Jesus said it himself, if you want to follow me, then you've got to take up a cross and come after me. So, so there's an offense to become a part of, and there's a glory that you get to share. 
They just go together. That's why Matthew says, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they'll call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. See, they, all the Greek gods, all the Roman deities, Zeus and Aphrodite and Athena and Hermes, I mean, even today, the Hindu gods, they have millions of them. And they're constantly visiting earth and going back to heaven. Same with the Greeks, same with the Hindus. But Matthew's not talking about that kind of God. He's talking about the one true God. In fact, if you open the New Testament to the very first book, which is Matthew, but before you get to the 23rd verse, he begins to lay out the history, the genealogy. He begins to deal with a very interesting subject, a long catalog of names and generations of Old Testament history that identifies this God with us that he's talking about. If you read there, if you just look at that genealogy, he talks about Abraham and David and Isaac and Jacob. The, the, the central claim, and let me have your attention, the central claim of the Christian faith is that the God who made himself known all the way from Adam to David up into the New Testament time has come to us and is known by us through the person called Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. And this is not some new first century God that Matthew's talking about. He goes, oh, no, no, that's why I'm giving you the genealogy. He, he's part of this long history of, of the God of the Old Testament that made himself known and appeared to us now in Jesus Christ. The Old Testament tells us that there's only one God, and that's who Matthew's talking about. And he's a God that you, you can't know through reason, like, well, well, I'll figure it out with my mind because I'm smart. You can't know him through philosophy or science or astronomy, but he makes himself known through the history of mankind all the way from Adam and Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, and then, then God raised up a nation. And through that nation, God did mighty miracles and works and performed exploits. And then it comes to the place that that nation is to make known to all nations a one true God. And Matthew says, oh yeah, there were other gods in the Old Testament. But they were false gods. They were idols. They were products of human imagination and, and things crafted by their own hands. And, and, and the Old Testament mentions them, Baal and Marduk and Dagon, gods of ancient cultures. But those ancient cultures don't exist anymore and their gods are gone as well. The Old Testament calls them false gods. But Matthew's talking about this one true God. This one true God who, who, who raised up the nation of Israel and now brings to us, as Matthew says, Emmanuel. And he's God with us. God alone, the only God, came to us. He was born of a virgin, uh, and we call his name Emmanuel. This would be offensive to that culture. Rome had all kinds of gods. But Matthew makes a bold statement. Jesus himself claimed to be the Messiah, Son of God. Now, it's kind of the same today. You tell somebody in your world, in your culture, well, I believe in one God. I believe in one Savior. I believe in one way to God. And that's to be in a relationship with Jesus Christ. Well, a lot of people are offended by that. But th listen, that's the central message of our faith in the Bible. That's it. That God is with us, and we come to him through the person of Emmanuel, Jesus Christ, God with us. See, if Jesus is not God, then we don't really know God, do we? How do we know him? I know Jesus through the Gospels. 
I read about his character. I read about his nature, his attributes, his spirit. If he's God, if Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us, then I know God. But if he's not, I don't know God. And I have no idea how to find him. The central claim of Christianity is if you come to Christ, you come to God. That's what it says. Honoring Jesus, well, you honor God. Dishonor Jesus, you dishonor God. Obey Jesus, you obey God. Resist Jesus, you resist God. If Jesus is not God, then the cross is just an expression of hate and cruelty. The death of Jesus stands as the center of our faith. He's born. Emmanuel, God with us. He dies on the cross. And he rises from the dead. It's a sacrifice for our sins. The punishment for my sins was taken by Christ on the cross who knew no sin at all. In fact, in Romans chapter 5, verse 8, it says, But God demonstrates his own love towards us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So if Jesus is not God, then the cross is just abuse, cruelty, and pain. But Jesus was not just another person who was sentenced for crimes he didn't do. If that were the case, God would be unjust. But if Jesus is God with us, and he chose to lay down his life for you and I, then here's the deal. God himself gave his life for you and I on a cross. I don't understand the mystery of, you know, God incarnate in a man. Uh, he, he came, though, and gave himself for you and I. When Jesus died on the cross, it was God taking my place, not someone else, but God. God was intervening in history for my sins, my darkness, because Jesus is God with us. That's what Matthew's describing. If Jesus is not God, I have no assurance of forgiveness, and I have no sense of being sure of my salvation. In in the book of Philippians, and I'll read this to you, it describes who Jesus is. It says this, Being in the form of God, he did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. Made himself no reputation, he took the form of a servant, came in the likeness of men, and being found in that appearance, he humbled himself. Became obedient to the point of death, even the death of a cross. He, 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 he says, even the death of a cross, because it was so cruel, it was so bloody. Therefore, God has highly exalted him, given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven, those on earth, and those under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. He's above all. He's exalted. He's powerful. He's ruling. He's reigning. He's a king of kings. He is, listen, Emmanuel, God with us. And that's what Matthew's saying. If Jesus is not God, then Christianity is just a bunch of people who say they know God, but really they have no way of knowing God without Jesus. That's what the Bible teaches. If Jesus is not who he claims to be, we're a bunch of Christmas fruitcakes. That's who we are. But he is. He's Emmanuel, God with us. If you're willing to be connected to the offenses that comes with saying Jesus is God with us, then you understand who he is. Oh, it's easier just to say, well, you know, Jesus is another way. He's a spiritual leader. He's a great teacher. He's got a great philosophy about eternity. And there's all kinds of different approaches and cultures. And, well, you have your God over there, and over in that country you have a God. 
That's not the call of Christianity. The call of Christianity is to say, Jesus is God with us. That's who we are to proclaim. That's who we are to lift up. But, but too many, you say, John, you know, when I tell them that Jesus is the only way or that he's the one way, that they say that's bigoted. That's narrow. That's intolerant. It turns people off. Well, you don't have to be bigoted, intolerant, narrow-minded to tell people this. Now, I know a lot of Christians who are bigoted, intolerant, and narrow-minded. But you don't have to be. When God opens a door for you to share, do it humbly, do it lovingly, do it gently, do it caringly, but do it truthfully. Tell people, hey, you're not an accident. There is one true God who created you, who loves you, who revealed himself in history in the person of Jesus Christ. And you can trust in him and you can believe in him and you can find your guilt gone. And you can find that thing called everlasting life. Don't purposely be offensive. But also know this. That not everyone you share the truth of who Jesus is will not accept it. Or else Jesus would have never been crucified. Some people won't believe. Some people won't come. There is a call on your life and my life as followers, ambassadors, to say Jesus is God with us. That's the call. Yes, there's offense. But I also submit to you there's glory. Think about it. God with us. Isn't that amazing? Who is Matthew talking to when he's writing this gospel? Who is is he saying these words to when he says, God is with us? Who's the us? Is he talking about you and I as he looks down the lens of the future? Is he talking to the Jews? Is he talking to sincere people? Is he talking to good people? Who is God with? When, when Matthew pins these words and tells us that God of the history, God of the Old Testament is now with us, who's his audience? When nations go to war, who is God with? When elections are being contested, who is God with? You say, well, I know who he's with. Oh, do you? Who is God with? Is he with the Democrats or is he with the Republicans? When people gather to worship, who's he with? The Baptists or the Presbyterians? Who's God with? Is he with the poor or the rich? Is God with the Southerners? Who say, heck, God's not forgetting. Is he with the Northerners? Who is God with? When Matthew says God is with us, who's he talking to? See, the gospel of Matthew was written to the early Christian church who was under extreme persecution. Talk about quarantine. These guys had to hide out and meet. They're being martyred for their faith. Read Fox's Books of Martyrs if you never had. It's a grueling read. The Roman Empire saw Christianity during the time that this was written as a threat, a suspect. So they met in secret. They met in caves. See, if you wanted to go to church December 20th, back in the first century when Matthew's writing the Gospels, the question would not be, well, I wonder if they have peppermint mocha in the coffee house. No, you wouldn't be asking that question. I wonder if the sound system's too loud or too soft. I wonder if my friends will be there. Now, here, here's would be the question in that time, in that day, if you wanted to go to the church. The question would be, will I get caught? Will I make it back home without being arrested? Christianity was never a call for fearful, wimpy people who sit on the sidelines. Never was that. Shouldn't be in your life or mine to cringe back from the culture or or what we might be afraid of. These people met. Matthew's writing during a time of persecution, and he opens his gospel. Listen, he opens his gospel reminding them of the history of God, 
And then he tells them that Jesus, that was born of a virgin, I mean, that's pretty powerful right there, is Emmanuel, God with us. And here's what he's saying. With all the power of Rome against us, with Judaism who thinks we're heretics, God is with us. I mean, if you look at the end of God, the Matthew's gospel, from, from, from the beginning to the end, he has this refrain. In Matthew chapter 28, he says, Jesus spoke to them. This is at the end where he's about to ascend. He tells them, hey, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Here's, look, look, I'm Jesus and all authority has been given to me. So I want you to go and hide out. No, he says, I'm with you. Go, therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then he adds this, teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the earth. I'm Emmanuel, he says. Even in the middle of his gospel, in Matthew chapter 18, verse 20, he says, for where two or three are gathered, because, listen, when he says God is with us, the crowd was small. If just two or three of you get together in that catacomb, if two or three of you get together in that cave, I want you to know I am with you. I'll be there. God with us, with a small group of people. Wait a minute, are, are you serious? He's not with Rome, the mighty empire. He, he, he's not with Judaism with all their rules and regulations and all the things. That, no, God says, I'm with these people who know who I am. In catacombs, in caves, trying to avoid persecution of the mighty empire. God is with them. Really? Is that what he's saying? Imagine how hard it would have been to invite people to church during that time. Your friends, your family, your neighbors. Hey, you want to come to church? Where are you meeting? Lower your voice just a little bit. We're in a secret cave under the city where catacombs are. And if you come, you could possibly be, be arrested or persecuted. So I'm assuming no coffee house, right? No, no coffee house. Any cool mugs or t-shirts? No, there's not. Well, what do you do when you go? We worship Jesus. And we believe God is with us. And that group of people, you know what they did? They turned the world upside down. They defeated the Roman Empire with the gospel of Jesus Christ because they wholeheartedly believed God is with us. This is Matthew's story. This is Matthew's proclamation. They believed in the reality that God was with them and would always be with them. See, see let me ask you a question. If God himself would come down from heaven, humble himself, and associate with people that needed him. The poor, the, the, the sinners, the prostitutes, the proud, the arrogant, the, the religious. Here's the question. Do you think you could do that? I mean, if God could do it, could you and I? Maybe talk to some people that, that we think, well, they're this or they're that, or we put them in our boxes. See, it's one thing to love Jesus. That's another thing to be like him. To recognize and realize that God's with me. To, to even love the people in church. I mean, let's just start there. Why is God with us? Because we're perfect? Yeah, that's why God's with us, right? God's with us because we're cool. God's with us because we got a great job. God's with us because we know how to do church. No, God's only with us because He loves us. He gave Himself for us. And here's what they believed, and here's what we need to understand. I think in the confused, rapidly changing culture that we live in, if God is with us, who can stand against us? God's with us. If ever we needed to know that and hear that, it's in the time that we live in as well. As a Christian, 
As a follower, representative of Jesus Christ, you need to know, I need to know deep in my heart and in my mind and my spirit, God's with me. He promises to be with me. And if God is with us, we can fulfill what he's called us to do. Amen? We can do it. Think of the smallness of the church in the first century and all the obstacles before them. How, how, how many odds were against them? So Matthew pins uh, from history, and he's trying to get them to remember, hey, think about all God did through Abraham. He didn't know where he was going. He didn't know where the city was. He, he had no idea. Think, think about Jacob and Moses and Joshua and David, all the powerful things that God did through them. Now remember, that same God has come to be with us, and he's Emmanuel this is not a God. He's saying this is the God with us. And then I think he's also saying in some way this. It's not Emmanuel God with me. But it's Emmanuel God with us. It's not me just doing my own thing for God. It's an us thing. We need each other. It's about us, the body of Christ. It's not look at me, God's with me. No, it's look at us. God's with us. His body, his people. You and I need to be connected to the body of Christ and not be disconnected or dislocated, but man, find a place and be a part of God with us. It's God with us. Learn to love those who are different than you in the body of Christ. I I would challenge you when you come to church, and I know this may sound crazy, talk to somebody you don't know. Well, they're awkward. What do you think you are? Well, they're weird. Get in the club. They're different. They have flaws. (laughs) You don't? See, it's, it's Emmanuel, God with us. People like you and me, with all our faults, our fears, our problems, our shortcomings. Matthew, pinning the gospel, recognizing the time and the place and all that's come before him and now what lies before them, all in the past and in the future. He, 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 he makes this amazing proclamation as he's writing down this gospel. He says, you know... There's this virgin that'll be with a child. What? Yeah, I know it's miraculous. And she'll bear a son. And here's the most miraculous thing. It's not so much the virgin, but he'll be God with us. And he'll be the only God, the one true God. And there'll be no other God like him. For God has sent him. In fact, God himself came down from heaven to be with us. Isn't that an amazing thing? And he doesn't tell us to live in fear. He doesn't tell us to to be, you know, cloistered off somewhere. But he says, now go into all the world and preach the gospel. And lo, I'm with you. Always. Always. Always.